Uh, so my talk is on code-like balance and what that means to me. Excellent. Uh, so ideally, for me, it should be like you know code like and sleep in there. Uh, usually, it's more code and then like this little slice. Uh, so I'm a web developer with a job. I haven't had my job as long as this guy on the left here has. But, uh, so all I used to do is code. Uh, I worked way too hard sometimes, just days and nights, all weekend on projects. Uh, I found a lot of connections with my friends and family, and my health would suffer because of it sometimes. Um, but I don't find that that's really rare in programs because programming attracts passionate people. Um, but this talk is about how we keep ourselves in the condition so we can keep doing what we love. I've actually done this, I've fallen asleep at that before. Um, so yeah, this is all just my opinions and my experiences with keeping a life balance. Uh, so my name is Chuck Bergeron, I've been designing and building web apps for about 10 years now. Uh, after school I started just building marketing sites and such with two designer friends, because uh, I wasn't really employable yet. Uh, then I went on to build a SaaS app with various like, fantastic teams, which I found infinitely more interesting than just building landing pages and marketing sites. Um, kind of tightly coupled to the Vancouver Ruby community, I run a brew house with some people in town and we're working on that called Good Bits. Check it out, it's awesome. I love the animated GIFs. So we'll check it out. And I love the hobby. It's all about. I love I love talking to one day, but probably thinking we should. Uh, so I'm really excited about code. This is me when I was a kid. Not actually, but you get the idea. Uh, I love thinking that feeling you get when you solve like complex problems and when you come on the other side. It's amazing. But sometimes you get a little too excited. About it. Um, so I can't stop working. Countless hours. Hammering my problems. Whenever I'm out, you know, with friends or family, I'll, sometimes my mind will just wander and I'll get a conversation and just wander back to work and think about the problems. So it's an issue. Uh, but enough about me. Let's talk about you. Um, some of you are probably doing coding and some of you have been doing it for a long time. Uh, for those of you who have been doing it a long time, you probably pick up a few languages, learn a lot of different frameworks. And you know, philosophies on how to organize code while in classes. Um, <clears throat> so take a minute to think of like the code you used to write way back in the day. I found this PHP file <laughs> that was for my first production app. If anybody knows what's going on here, let me know. <laughs> Sarah. Uh, so you are not your code. Um, it's a philosophy I like to by <laughs> My friend recently was working on a project and he claimed a, a story ticket in project management software. Um, he starts working on it and comes up with a good solution. And it takes about an hour and he really likes the way he solved the problem. <laughs> Another guy on the team has been working on it all day. His solution is way more complex, but he didn't claim that ticket. So they, they start fighting heads and they realize that they've been doing the same thing. And, you know, it takes them a few hours to cool down, but eventually the guy who's the team uh, concedes and realizes that, that is a better solution. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I talked about just he was really emotionally involved in his solution instead of, you know, way different. Uh, we all really suck at code from time to time, we think it's the best thing ever. Uh, that's part of lesson I learned. Uh, working, on my, like, working with those designers back in the day, I would be working with myself all the time. So I really, you know, when I started working on teams, I started getting like, code written apart to my order. <clears throat> but, you know, I learned there's a better way of doing things, and you realize that there's things that are possible, and you learn from not figure out where to go. I think it's really cool. Uh, another example of this in the 
very short code is prototype.js, which was a precursor to jQuery. Uh, it was written by Sam Stevenson of 37 Signals. And Sam, uh, Sam wrote an article called You Are Not Your Code. And in that, he talks about disconnecting himself from his code. Um, so we have to be willing not only to try new ideas, but to retreat when those ideas prove untenable or when something better comes along. Uh, it goes on about being open to new and different ideas, which is a really healthy way of looking at software. Um, yeah, so we have to work with teams instead of working on my own to figure that out. Uh, so he also writes, an alternative take on the problem your software solves is not cost that. It is simply the results of a regenerative process. Uh, so nobody uses prototype anymore, hopefully. Um, and when I learned these kind of attitudes, my health and my stress levels improved a lot. My code like balance worked itself out. You know, moving from being solo to working on a team, no longer did I have to deliver everything myself. And I trust others to help me with delivering the product. Another great philosophy if you're not, but if you are the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So definitely seek out teams that you want to work with that you feel like you can learn a lot from. Uh, so that's thoughts and attitudes. So also exercise is super important for me. Our best um, <clears throat> Treat your body well. Uh, I didn't notice it when I was younger, but it got really crucial when I started to get a little older and started feeling more. Um, yeah, knowing what to leave time for, stay happy. So, supposedly in tribal times, we used to like chase down our prey. We would just run after it for hours and hours, and eventually it would tire out. And then but we don't do that anymore. We should do something along those lines. We should still you know, run every now and then. Uh, I never used to run. <laughs> uh, so I'm in Vancouver. You know, most of my 20s, I played exercise, I drank, I smoked, I had a lot of fun. But I totally failed my body. And uh, the cool thing about running for me is I feel remarkably better the next day. So when I'm at work the next day, I'm just way more productive than we were. Uh, when you're sitting for long hours too, like my joints get really sore, so I found yoga, which was super helpful for that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay, so if if I get stuck on a problem, I'll try and you know walk away from it, and let my brain just chew through it, go to sleep, or uh, you know, go swimming or go running or whatever, and while I'm doing that, my mind is working through the problem. Uh, I find I need a lot of introvert time, so I actually have to tell people, like, sorry, I need to go hang out on my own, put some headphones on, listen to be alone with my thoughts for a while. Uh, work environment is important. Get an ergonomic chair, probably not like one of these, I don't know what's really going on. <laughs> but uh, get your boss to get you one. Like that, it was, yeah, it makes a huge difference on things that it's sore. Uh, change your environment every six months or so. Uh, I've heard that it doesn't really matter what you do when you change it, just change it. And uh, you can possibly notice that you're having some increases there. If the light's too dim or you're getting too much artificial light, if the room's too cold, all these things can really affect your, your happiness when you're working. So. Uh, so then there's compensation, which is really important. You have to get paid. I also like to call it cash money. Uh, it's good. Money's good. It helps you buy things. Uh, it helps you get away from the computer, which is also beneficial sometimes. You know, going on trips, uh, music festivals, flights, whatever. Uh, <coughs> sometimes I take my work too seriously. I see a lot of other people doing this too. Um, we just get really involved, really engrossed in it. Um, I think it can be get to a dangerous level, especially when you're working with somebody else. You don't know what you're really getting 
have the arrangement. Not saying you should take pride in your work, but knowing you're getting a good arrangement. Going to it, knowing. Um, if you are getting paid, get paid adequately for the work you're doing. Don't just accept stops or options in lieu of pay. That's just not smart. If they say they can't pay you that month, And uh, there is a salary versus equity calculator out there. So if you work for a startup and you're just like, how much does my options work? Is it worthwhile that I just get paid this much? Or should I stick through with the startup? I can post that later. That one Twitter or whatever. Uh, yeah, so pay isn't everything. Uh, the experience is also useful working with amazing teams, amazing people, and just learning that one. And uh, never be the smartest person in the room. So for me, uh, caring but not being too emotionally invested in my code, exercising, staying out of debt, making time for myself and other passions, all leads to a better life balance for me. And hygiene is cool, so I stay every now and then. Or don't. And don't forget that there's a lot of that. <laughs>